up you guys welcome back to another one if you are new to the channel i am gold pony i do new car truck suv reviews on youtube and today we're in the brand new 2023 nissan leaf courtesy of younger nissan in frederick maryland for more information on their inventory please feel free to check out the link in the description box below and so we're in this one today because this is the cheapest electric car available right now in the u.s and there are some changes for 2023 including taking five trim levels down to only two and we'll get into that and the pricing all on that in a second here but this one also actually still qualifies for the $7,500 tax credit which not all electric vehicles can say right now so that's also a very big plus for this one as well so ultimately in this video we will be testing out and going over everything about this one from acceleration to braking steering for ride quality sound system so having said that what do you guys say let's just go ahead and jump right into it and as always I start with pricing. And so for 2023, those five trim levels are taken down now to only two. First one being the S, being the one that we are in today, actually starting at $28,040. Then there is the SV Plus for $36,040. But with those two trim levels, there are actually two different power plants to go along with them. For the S trim level, that one is powered by a 40 kilowatt electric motor, putting out 147 horsepower, 236 pound-feet of torque, sent to the front wheel, zero to 60 time of approximately 7.4 seconds with a range of 149 miles and it can charge from zero to 80 percent in approximately an hour in case you were curious about that but then there is that other power plant that one belonging to the sv plus trim level that one is powered by a 60 kilowatt electric motor putting out 214 horsepower 250 pound feet of torque again power sent to the front wheels zero to 60 time approximately 6.5 seconds so about a full second quicker to 60 there with a range coming in at 212 miles so now that we've got all of that out of the way what do you guys say let's go ahead and find a straightaway keep in mind we have the less powerful s with this year today but let's put the acceleration here to the test and let's see how quickly we can get this one here up to speed all right here we go go baby whoa a little bit of a skid there dang i like it yeah, that is play quick, especially for scooting around city streets. But zero to 60 is 7.5. That's pretty darn quick. And the cool thing about electric cars is whenever you see a number like that, it's always going to feel a heck of a lot quicker than his gasoline powered counterpart because of that instant torque that you get with electric vehicles. So that was a heck of an acceleration. Definitely puts a smile on your face for like the little zippityness. Like if I were to just hit it right now, it throws your head in the back. I'm telling you. And it slips a little bit. That's a fun acceleration, even for the S. Well done, Nissan. And that's another reason to like electric cars. But anyways, to go along with that acceleration, as always, braking is equally important. And so, as expected, you will find four-wheel ventilated disc brakes coming standard. As far as that 60-0 stopping distance goes, it comes in at 121 feet. As far as braking fuel goes, if I were to let off the gas right now, it is going to bring me to a complete stop because there is a little button called E-pedal located just in front of the shifter, and that gives you that one-pedal driving mode, and I have pressed that. Now, you don't have to press that you can leave it out of that e-pedal or the one pedal driving mode and essentially it's going to operate kind of like a normal car where you actually have to use the brakes to stop but if you do press that e-pedal drive mode that is going to bring you to a complete stop gradually ever so gradually without you ever having to hit the brakes which is going to save you on some brake pads and i think it's personally stinking cool in electric cars when they have that because not all of them have that honestly so Anyways, then touching on suspension and handling up front, you're going to get an independent strut type front suspension in the back, torsion beam, rear axle, front and rear stabilizer bars. As far as ride quality goes, it's actually been perfectly fine on my short little test drive here today. Like it's actually been pretty darn good. If I'm being honest, it's been absorbing the road imperfections perfectly fine. So ride quality has actually impressed me here. As far as cabin noise goes, electric cars always crush it with that because there's no engine noise or anything like that. There's been really no wind noise coming into the cabin, no road noise. It's actually been kind of on the luxury side of things, quite honestly. So I've had no issues there. As far as steering feel goes, it is a little bit on the looser side of things. A lot of times with electric cars, you get a heavier steering feel, specifically with Tesla. And uh, that is not the case with the Leaf. So I wouldn't have minded if Nissan kind of heavied up that steering feel. It's probably the wrong way to put it, but made it a little heavier of a weight to the steering that would have probably been a little more enjoyable to drive now having said that it's not bad it's just definitely not even close to as heavy as a tesla that's all i'm saying but that touching of visibility speaking of there's a tesla in my rear view mirror right now i can see perfectly fine out the back so definitely not going to have any issues there either but that pretty much rounds out the performance segment of this review you guys let's now go ahead and take a look at the exterior of our brand new 2023 nissan leaf 
All right, and so here she is, you guys, the new 2023 Nissan Leaf finished in gun metallic, in case you were curious of the exterior color name that we had on this one. But as always, let's go ahead and start with where the Leaf is made. Taking a look at the VIN, first character is the number one, indicating that the Nissan Leaf is built and assembled in the U.S., specifically Tennessee, in case you were curious as the final assembly point. But let's go ahead and start up front, of course, with it being an electric vehicle, there is no front grille. But instead, this is a pretty cool little design to it. There's actually like little shapes located within that front grille and hopefully I can get some of this on camera, but it's actually a pretty cool little design to it. So I'm definitely a fan of that. It's, it's different. I think that's why I like it because you don't see that on any other vehicles. But also just above that, you can actually find the charging port. Charging port is located above the Nissan logo, which is again, a little bit different than most other electric vehicles out there. So I wanted to highlight that. To the sides, halogen headlights do come standard for the S that we have today, but for that SV Plus, you will find LED headlights with LED daytime running lights. Automatic feature does come standard with both trim levels, so that's definitely nice. Also though, automatic high beams coming standard for both trim levels. Essentially what that is, so when you have your high beams on at night and it senses a vehicle coming in the opposite direction, it's gonna automatically dim them back to low beams. Then when that vehicle is gone, it's gonna automatically then bounce it back up to high beams for you. So that's pretty darn cool. And with the SV Plus, you also get fog lights down below that we don't have with us here today. So can't show those to you guys, but that pretty much rounds out the front end of this one. Let's now go ahead and make our way to the side. All right, so now so see around to the side of the leaf. Black window surrounds do come standard. Floating roof line towards the back on that C pillar. That definitely looks good. Highlighted in black, kind of differentiating the roof line from the rest of the body. Chrome door handles do come standard at both trim levels, as you guys can see. Body color power adjustable side mirrors coming standard, but they will be heated with the SV Plus trim level if you wanted heated side mirrors. Then take a look down at the wheel setup, 16 inch steel wheels with covers coming with the S trim that we have today. That of course is what you guys are looking at. And then 17 inch aluminum alloys coming with the SV Plus. But that pretty much rounds out the side profile. Let's now go ahead and make our way to the back. All right, so but now since we are around to the back of the leaf, all the way to the top, you got a body colored shark fin antenna. Just below that, rear spoiler with an integrated brake light. Just below that, rear window wiper as well. I see that they have done away with the zero emission badging and the trim level badging back here as well. That's a minor change for 2023. I remember seeing that for the 2022 model year, so. That is kind of interesting. I don't really think it's a good thing or a bad thing. It don't really matter to me quite honestly, but just below it all, you're actually gonna find a pretty darn cool looking rear diffuser front and center there underneath. So I think that looks pretty darn good. And of course, since this is an electric vehicle, there is no exhaust, so there will be no exhaust clip as expected. So having said that, what do you guys say? Let's just go ahead and make our way to the interior of the 2023 Nissan Leaf. All right, so now since we are around to the back of the Leaf, when it comes to opening that rear lift gate, it is a manual lift gate for both trim levels, of course. Once opened up, cargo capacity comes in at 23.6 cubic feet. If that was not enough space, there is a 60-40 split, meaning the rear seats do fold down, bump that up to an even 30 cubic feet then. There is some cargo lighting back there. Cargo cover is going to be optional and of course there is a hook for hanging those charging cables which actually of course you get with the leaf and uh, you can just hang them up back there so that's pretty cool. But anyways then make our way up to the rear legroom 33.5 inches so for reference I am an even six feet tall this is how much space I have back there. There is no rear center armrest but there is cup holders kind of to make up for it and that's found kind of on the floor separating the two rear passengers there and there's a little bit of rubberized storage just in front of that so that is pretty cool no rear ventilation as well but there is dual rear usb charging ports so if you have rear passengers or rear passenger kids they can stay charged up on their tablets or cell phones so that is pretty cool as well so then making our way up to the front seats manually adjustable cloth seating coming with the s however you do get an eight-way power driver seat with two-way power lumbar for the sv and then heated front seats for the sv trim level as well but to my surprise honestly these s trim level seats the manually adjustable seats they were perfectly comfortable for me personally so definitely didn't have any issues there then taking a look at the steering wheel it is tilt and telescoping it will be leather wrapped for the sv heated as well for the sv trim level and i like the flat bottomness to it i think that's a pretty cool little design element so for our s trim level of course it will be wrapped in urethane but then make your way to the startup let me start by showing you guys the key here essentially all of your buttons are located on one side of the key 
got your Nissan logo to the top, lock, unlock, and that button to unlock the uh, charging ports up front there as well. But it is all keyless entry with a push button start. So all I'm going to do here is simply put my phone to the brake and press that whitish engine start button located kind of just in front of the shifter and buttons there. So when started up, there is kind of a seven inch digital cluster found on the left, speedometer then found on your right. And of course you can adjust what is on that digital gauge cluster by using the steering wheel mounted controls found on the left side of the steering wheel there, giving you things like how many miles you have left until you run out of range. Also gives you an outside temperature, 64 degrees today, that is not too bad. Battery temperature, got kind of an eco power driving statistic up there as well, along with the time of the day. So pretty much everything you could possibly want in the digital portion of the gauges there. Then making our way to overall interior quality, there is an overhead sunglass holder that does come standard. Automatic climate control also coming standard, meaning you can simply just set a temperature and the vehicle will automatically then hit that for you. Auto dimming rear view mirror coming with the SV trim level only. And actually, I wanted to elaborate on the shifter a little bit here because it's definitely different than most shifters that you uh, traditionally will find in other vehicles. But I like the blue accent to it. But to shift it into drive, you slide it to the left and down. To shift it into reverse, you slide it to the left and up. Neutrals directly to the left. And then P is going to be park. So you just press in on the silver part of the shifter there. So in case anybody was curious about that. I do like the blue contrast stitching also found in this thing on the doors as well as the seats themselves. So that's a pretty cool look, but just the front of the shifter, you got your e-pedal button, you got your eco driving mode and a little bit of rubberized storage. You got dual phone charging ports, a 12 volt power outlet. Behind the shifter, you have a couple cup holders, a little bit of storage. And within the center armrest, just a teeny, teeny little bit of space or a little bit of storage that you can have in there as well. So overall, it's very practical. There are some hard plastics, but Overall, it's pretty much as expected. And honestly, for the price point, it's not all that bad. But then taking a look at the infotainment screen here, an eight inch color touchscreen display will come standard. Bluetooth and audio streaming coming with that Android Auto, Apple CarPlay. We'll get factory navigation system if you go with the SV trim level. And of course, you can check out your radio information up there as well. And so when it comes to the sound systems, there are two of them, dependent upon the trim level, of course. We'll get four speakers for the S that we have today, and then a six speaker sound system for the SV. So, Having said that, what do you guys say? Let's go ahead and turn on the radio, see what we got playing this morning, and let's test out the clarity of this one. What you heard about me? What if it's taking the dollar out of me? No All right, so the bass was okay. Clarity is, as you would expect, a four speaker sound system to sound like. So honestly, it's not the very best. I, like I said, the bass was okay, but this is more of a this is more of a podcast type of sound system, if I'm being honest. But anyways, last thing I want to mention to you guys on that infotainment screen, of course, is when you do put the leaf in reverse, you will find a rear view camera coming standard across the board. You will get that kind of chime sound since this is an electric vehicle. So people walking behind you know that you're actually backing up so you don't end up hitting them. And you actually get a 360 degree monitor as well on the SV trim level, in case you wanted that bird's eye view. But as always, that is going to lead us into safety. So to start front side, side current airbags do come standard driver and passenger knee airbags as well. In the back, you're gonna have latch, AKA lower anchors and tethers for children for the rear car seats, rear child door locks, tire pressure monitoring system, but also coming standard, forward collision warning, automatic emergency braking with pedestrian detection, intelligent lane intervention, blind spot monitoring system with rear cross traffic alert, rear automatic braking and intelligent trace control as well so overall when it comes to my final thoughts i'm gonna put it this way this is the least expensive electric car available in the u.s today if you take that s trim level and you apply the 7500 dollars tax credit which like i said is still available at the time of me making this video that puts you at a price of twenty thousand five hundred and forty dollars so many people are saying right now that electric cars for the most part are unaffordable that doesn't apply to this one because 20540 that's the same price as a Civic or a Corolla or a Sentra. That is an affordable electric car. So just keep that in mind. Also, very nice acceleration of this thing. And you typically will find that with all electric vehicles out there. Love the one pedal drive that doesn't always come standard on all electric vehicles out there. Sometimes you do have to hit the brakes, but with one pedal drive, it's gonna save you a ton of money on not having to hit the brakes with having to change out brake pads or resurfacing rotors or changing out the rotors or, that's gonna save you some money there. So I like that too. As far as roof improvement goes, the only real thing I could think of is, well, maybe two things, but less range than the competition, but it's also less price than the competition. So if you want more range, you're gonna to have to pay more for it. So if you want a less expensive electric car, 
this is a solid option for the price point. Also, the interior quality isn't the best, but it's to be expected at this price point, and the sound system is pretty basic as well. But anyways, let me know what you guys think of the new Leaf in the comment section below, and that is about it for this one, you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Feel free to follow me on social media if you want to see what's coming next on the channel before it gets to YouTube. Be sure to hit the subscribe and the bell notification button if you're into new car reviews, because that is what we do here on this channel after all. Do appreciate you guys watching more than you know. I will see you guys all in the next video. Stay gold.